The actual development of the vaccine was not the most problematic part. This vaccine was already um, created in the laboratory. There was a patent on it already in 2003 by the Canadian Public Health Agency. So developing a vaccine in the laboratory is not the most difficult step. What, what is the hardest thing to do is to test a new product, whether it be a vaccine or some other medication, in human beings. And in fact, that step between developing the product and testing it in human clinical trials is often called the valley of death. And many vaccines do not cross the valley of death successfully. Um, it costs a lot of money to do clinical trials in humans. It costs a lot of time. And in the case of Ebola vaccines, until 2014, there was uh, little interest in the, pub in the private sector. The market, uh, so-called market, for such a vaccine was very narrow. We're talking about a very small geographic region of Africa. And in the public sector, public institutions have competing priorities for their limited budgets. So when the Ebola epidemic of 2014 struck, there there was unprecedented international collaboration and a shifting of public budgets to enable these clinical trials to finally launch. Approving a vaccine, that's uh, getting the actual approval. You need all of these safety data, you need uh, immunogenicity data, you need to show that the vaccine can trigger an immune response, so antibody production. Um, and you need to test a vaccine in the field. Uh, luckily for this vaccine, the VSV vaccine, it was tested in the field in 2015, just toward the end of the Ebola outbreak, uh, and it did demonstrate clinical efficacy, a real protection against active Ebola virus disease. The vaccine is a live vaccine. Um, it's got uh, on its surface the protein that the Ebola virus produces, but this is a modified protein. and it's a live vaccine, so it's got as a vector, so the inside of it, is the VSV virus, the, vac the vesicular stomatitis vaccine. Um, that vector, so the VSV virus, does not normally infect humans. It's a very mild virus. It infects livestock. When it does infect humans, it's a very mild disease. It causes some kind of flu-like symptoms, very transient. So what the Canadian scientists did was they took this VSV virus and they put an Ebola glycoprotein on its surface. So when it's injected into our bodies, our bodies think that they're seeing Ebola virus, but they're not. They're actually seeing the VSV virus, which is very mild. That vector is known to produce a good immune response. It's being used in other vaccines as well. So here in Geneva, we tested the vaccine on healthy volunteers, and we looked at it for safety, uh, and we looked at it for immunogenicity, or the ability to uh, trigger the production of antibodies in the blood of those who have received the vaccine. And indeed, we found uh, that, as expected, there would be some local reaction, some, some uh, flu-like symptoms to the vaccine just after uh, getting it. Uh, and on the good, very good side, we found that uh, everyone uh, developed an antibody response to the vaccine. The VSV vaccine uh, is very immunogenic, which means it really uh, induces a very strong production of antibodies, and that's exactly what we want to see. It's also been able to be tested in the field before the end of the Ebola epidemic. It was tested clinically, so not just in healthy volunteers. It was tested in people who were exposed to Ebola virus disease uh, in this ring vaccination study that was done in Guinea. So what happened was when there was a clinical case of Ebola virus disease, the ring around that patient was either vaccinated or not. And those who were vaccinated immediately did not develop any Ebola virus disease. So no symptoms, no illness. Uh, this is the only vaccine that's been proven clinically to really give protection. So that's what's really promising about this vaccine. There have been challenges identified during the production of and this, the testing of this VSV Zebo vaccine. 
What we did expect and certainly did find was some initial reactogenicity. That's what we call those first uh, flu-like symptoms that you get when you've got a new infection. And we did see that in, in some of our volunteers, not all of them, but these were very transient, didn't last more than a day. So not a big problem. What we didn't expect, however, was an actual dissemination, so a diffusion of the vaccine virus uh, beyond the blood compartment. So um, we found a couple of weeks even after vaccination, we found in rare cases evidence of the vaccine virus in peripheral tissues such as the joints, the skin. So in these cases, all of which were self-limited, we did see vaccine virus going beyond the blood compartment and not being eliminated very quickly as we had in most people. This signals to us a safety challenge, particularly for specific immunocompromised groups, such as very young children, pregnant women, patients with AIDS. These are groups where we don't often see good viral control, so these are groups where we'd really need to be more careful with this kind of vaccine. What we've um, just discovered is what we call the signature of the vaccine in the plasma, so in the blood compartment of our volunteers. So what we did uh, just before vaccination and in the days following vaccination, we looked at um, many inflammatory markers. So these are proteins in the blood that all of us have. We measured them both before and after vaccination. And what we consistently found was a spike, an increase in six of these inflammatory markers uh, in concert with one another on the day after vaccination. And we were able with our statisticians to develop a formula uh, that includes five of these six markers uh, into a very simple formula actually which describes this signature and it's really particular to this vaccine. These five markers uh, are all mediated actually by one specific kind of white blood cell. So those are the blood cells that defend us from outside attack. Uh, and it's very specific to this vaccine. That one white blood cell is called the monocyte. And indeed, Ebola virus actually does target the monocyte. So these are very important cells in protecting us against this virus. And indeed, the vaccine uh, triggers their activity. So this is very good. We were able to identify this signature in our Geneva uh, volunteers. We saw these uh, markers, uh, we saw them rising in those who had received vaccine and those who got placebo really had no activity of that sort. So we derived this signature from our volunteers here but then we wanted to validate it. We wanted to check and make sure that it wasn't just something we were seeing here in Geneva. So we uh, were very lucky to be able to validate it against plasma samples, so blood samples, of volunteers who had received the same vaccine in Africa, in Gabon. And indeed, in those volunteers, we saw exactly the same signature, the same activity. And furthermore, in both populations, we actually saw that those with a stronger signature, so a higher score of the signature, had more um, of those flu-like symptoms, they were reacting more, and they had a stronger antibody projection. So they had more, um, more response, more immune response to the vaccine, which was very much what we had hoped. Interestingly, the few volunteers who went on to develop that arthritis, the inflammation of the peripheral joints that we didn't really expect, those people had weaker scores of the signature. So the signature wasn't as strong as the, in them, and this really reflects that there was slower, weaker viral control. So using this signature, we're, we, we know now that we can actually use it to anticipate and to determine our responses to this vaccine, how much we're going to respond, uh, what we might expect in the weeks following vaccination. And this actually can be used, this signature can be used to inform the development of other vaccines as well. This signature that we found in the plasma or the blood compartment 
is really just the beginning. We actually believe that most of the activity that takes place just after injection of the vaccine doesn't occur in the blood. There we're just seeing spillover. What's happening is probably very local, right in the tissue where we've been injected with this vaccine. And there we are lucky to be working with a very large international group of researchers who are looking at differential gene expression, proteomics, transcriptomics, in other words, very particular um, effects of the vaccine, uh, both in the blood compartment but also in tissues. Uh, and there we'll, we'll be able to, with that work, we'll be able to refine the signature of the VSV Zebo vaccine much more uh, in order to help uh, better understand how this vaccine is going to work and how other vaccines will work. Refaire le pansement. Et à la fin de cette surveillance, je dois voilà, te, te poser quelques questions. Et surtout, euh, s'il y a de la rougeur. Ouais. Là, voilà. Et de relever ici, sur cette feuille. Alors aujourd'hui, on est jour zéro, jour de l'injection. Euh. On m'a dit oui. J'espère que je vais pouvoir prendre tout avec mon petit. Je vais dans le suivi plein. Par du froquis, ça l'hiver. Tu pourrais demander à. Ouais, je peux. Oui. Ah, le pic, hein. J'ai rien dit. C'est pas grave. Tu le fais comme ça, hein. S'il ne se déplace pas. Voilà, mais là il ne bouge pas, il est bien calé. Ouais. On a des bons résultats, si vous voulez les voir. Euh, en fait, euh, c'était tout dans la norme. Donc, euh, pas de l'anthropénie la dernière fois. C'était vraiment bien. Tant mieux. Oui. Donc, pas de symptômes. Euh, Plus du tout, tout, non. Très, très bien. Donc, en, av en avance, euh, est-ce que vous avez pu euh, euh, suivre les, la, la contraception Oui. Ce temps, voilà, très bien. bien respecté ça. Ok, très bien. Encore trois semaines. Oui, je sais. Ouais. Ben, pour l'instant, tout se passe bien. J'ai fait un peu de fièvre. Euh mardi, donc le lendemain de l'injection du vaccin, mm -hmm. et depuis, euh, plus rien. De la santé au sens large, il y a vraiment des choses extrêmement diversifiées, déjà, parce que c'est vrai qu'entre... Les prélèvements qu'on a effectués à ce site. Tout à fait. Et puis... Euh... Okay. Effectivement, donc euh, c'est pas rouge. C'est pas un duré. 
Ouais. Donc là, on n'a pas besoin de remettre un autre site. D'accord. Je vais appuyer un petit peu. Très bien. On a quelques Encore deux. Pas de souci. Je vais enlever les deux. Ça va Ouais, merci. Euh, oui, ouais, aussi d'injection, oui. Ah, j'ai pas mis le temps. Je voulais... Par rapport à la dernière fois, comment ça s'est passé Donc la dernière fois, c'était mardi, c'est mm -hmm. donc le lendemain de l'injection du vaccin. C'est là que j'ai eu plus de symptômes, qui étaient tout à fait euh, supportables. Hein. C'était une sensation de fièvre, un petit peu de douleur au site d'injection dans le bras. Euh, mais rien de plus. Hein. Et ça a duré euh, une journée. Le lendemain, c'est-à-dire mercredi matin, je me sentais de nouveau en pleine forme. D'accord. Donc vous avez plutôt bien vécu cette euh, expérience va vaccinale, est-ce qu'on pourrait le dire comme ça Oui, je, je trouve que ça ressemble beaucoup aux, aux effets du vaccin contre la grippe, par exemple. Oui. oui, bonjour. Voilà, je vais vous installer dans la chambre. Oui, ok. Je vous laisse vous asseoir si vous voulez bien enlever vos chaussures. Oui. On va prendre la mesure du poids. D'accord. Fermez la porte. Respirez bien. Oui, oui. Je ne pas que... Voilà. une grosse prise de sang quand même. Oui, ça va. Voilà. Je vais quitter, hein. mm -hmm. Voilà. Oui. Voilà, J'enlève le glissement. Ça va. Oui, ça fait un peu mal dans le muscle, mais tout va bien. Ça brûle Voilà. Vous allez repartir à la maison avec un journal de bord. Ok. Qui se présente comme ça. On va vous demander de remplir et de prendre votre température euh, tous les soirs, à partir de ce soir. Ok. 